Well, what you just heard from San Francisco ought to be highlighting the need for lawmakers in Washington and maybe the press, too, to focus on the immigration crisis, which is real and bizarre and hurting people. But instead, another news cycle has been consumed by President Trump's Twitter habits as politicians and the press continue their meltdown over his attack on the hosts of MSNBC's Morning Joe. Texas Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee didn't even bother to deny what Trump tweeted is true. She conceded it, basically. Crazy Joe and low IQ Mika, she took that as an insult to crazy dumb people everywhere. Watch. When you begin to utilize again the diminishing of those who have mental health needs, psycho Joe Scarborough or psycho Joe or low IQ Mika, Wait a second, doesn't Sheila Jackson Lee have her own history of denigrating people with, as she put it, mental health needs? There was that time a few years ago when her staff told reporters that she, the suddenly sensitive congresswoman from Houston, referred to them as, quote, foolish and, quote, stupid and morons. <laughs> Not to mention a number of other things that we cannot repeat on television. Different context, I guess. When Sheila Jackson Lee calls you dumb, it's a form of civil rights activism. Not like with Trump, where it's an attack on the disabled. MSNBC, meanwhile, booked a shrink to sort it out. She's never met the president, but that doesn't mean she can't diagnose him as mentally ill. She's pretty sure those tweets were a sign Trump could be a highly dangerous man, with an emphasis, of course, on man. Also, for me, in terms of looking at his mental health, which I can't totally commentate on, I've obviously never treated him in my office, although he's free to call me if he needs because <laughs> I think he does. But I would say that under times of stress, people decompensate. And when men decompensate in particular, they have impulse control issues. So that's what's concerning to me. And they lash out usually with violence or with this type of harassment. Can't commentate, but did. Congressman Keith Ellison, meanwhile, says the president shouldn't even be allowed to speak on social media. I personally think that Twitter and company should treat him just like any other social media harasser and snatch his, his account. Because when you're rude to people on Twitter, that crosses a line and we need to silence you. But hold on. What about the roughly 80% of Twitter users who are routinely rude to other people on Twitter? Well, that's different. They're not Donald Trump. It's an entirely different thing. Meanwhile, over at CNN, the conversation lingered on Trump's sexism, to be clear. Not sexiness, but sexism. Because when you criticize someone's appearance, it is sexist. Unless it's Trump's hair or his weight or his skin color, in which case it's funny. But when you do it to a woman, that is sexist. Unless it's a woman you disagree with politically, like Melania Trump or Kellyanne Conway. In which case it's just the truth and frankly pretty hilarious or whatever. We'll let CNN explain the standard. What, what kind of impact do you think these types of sexist attacks on female anchors, for example, not the first time he's done this, will have on your own party, your Republican Party's reputation? There it is. Trump was rude to Mika, so it's a sexist political party now. The whole GOP, irredeemably sexist, including the majority of married women who just voted for it, sexists every one. Well, former ad man Donnie Deutsch has thought a lot about this whole thing, the tweets, the sexism, and frankly, he's just mad, furious, actually, on behalf of women everywhere. Here's Donnie's view of it. He's a pig. He's a vulgar pig. He's physically disgusting to look at. I mean, that's what I find ironic about the way he starts to always go after other people's physical attributes. He's not mentally okay. And what, this is a man with nuclear codes. We have to start paying attention to it. And he's disgusting to look at. I, I know everybody's going to say, Donnie. But no, 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 no. I'm so, on so many levels. No, no. Uh, let me tell you why it's not relevant. Because enough is enough. Enough is enough with this disgusting, vulgar man. Did you hear that, America? A pig. No wonder the Muslim world dislikes Donald Trump so much. He's not even human. He's an animal with cloven hooves, totally haram, who hates women. And we'll tell you who's not going to stand for that, not for one minute. Donnie Deutsch, that's who. He's going to settle this thing once and for all, the way they do it back in the old country, on the mean streets of Queens in the outer boroughs, with their fists like men between stickball games in front of the candy store. Sharks versus Jets. Just you and me, tough guy. Mano a mano. Donald, if you're watching, we're from Queens. I'll meet you in the schoolyard, brother. I'll oh meet God. you in the school. Okay. 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 No, I'm serious. Yeah, this is, this is where we, this needs to be. Can you put the sunglasses back? No, no, no. I, I just, no but he's no, a we, coward. No, he's a coward. We want, to take it, coward. we want to take it out of the school. I don't yard. want to.
All right. Settle down, Fredo. It's just Twitter. <laughs> John, David, Daniel, John Daniel Davidson is a senior correspondent at The Federalist, and he joins us now. So, John, it seems to me this is the single greatest thing that has happened to cable news. Nothing allows anchors to feel as virtuous, quite as virtuous, as when Donald Trump tweets. Uh, no, it's, it's terrible. Look, when the media reacts this way to Donald Trump's tweets, <laughs> it just confirms his criticism of the media to all his supporters uh, it, because it's embarrassing to the media, which should be focused on a lot of the important issues that you were talking about earlier about sanctuary cities. There's a health care bill that's that's being debated yeah. right now. Um, but, you know, I mean, that's not to say that Trump should be tweeting. I, I want to be clear. Well, Trump I, I probably shouldn't tweet. Uh, but yes. uh, you, but when he does, he sort of provokes this overreaction on the part of, of not just the media, but Democrats. And I think that they think they're really uh, getting him. You know, they think that they're really um, got the best of Trump when they when they act like this. Uh, and I, I wish somebody would pull them aside and tell them that it's not having the effect that they think it's having. I feel like on some level they love it. I mean, it's like Christmas and New Year's and your birthday rolled into one because the subtext of all of this criticism, and I agree with you, some of the criticism I think is valid, shouldn't be tweeting, but the subtext right. of their criticism is I'm a great person. I'm like way better than you. And by the way, I'm tough and I'd beat you up if I could. They're holding me back, but I'd get you if I could. <laughs> it's just like, really, yeah. I mean, it's, they love it. It's like a, it's a combination of sort of insufferable moral preening yes. with this like schoolyard macho-ness. And it's all put on as well. You know, these are not courageous people that are no. that we're talking about here because as you noted earlier you know they're very willing to have this double standard when it comes to republican women not just melania trump or kellyanne conway but think of all the republican women that have been part of gop administrations in the past condoleezza rice the treatment that sarah palin got in 2008 i mean for the media to cry foul over sexism now when they're willing to turn a blind eye every time a republican woman is trashed by other members of the media is a little rich. Having spent my life in newsrooms, I could add a lot to that observation, but let me just say, you're absolutely right. These are not the people who, sh who should be making that claim at all. And I like a lot of them, actually. They're nice people. But I wonder, though, if there is a, a, a kind of method behind this. I mean, my instinct when I saw these tweets was the president got mad and wrote this. They're attacking him. He hits back. And that's how the White House has explained it. But I wonder if there potentially is a strategic element to this. Well, I think... Probably from a business standpoint, they think that it makes for good television, that it's entertaining. Uh, right. That's a lot of what these shows are about. And I think that they think it will cast them in sort of the heroic role against the, the villain in the White House. And so it's a, it's a chance for them to gin up this kind of controversy and this kind of battle and not have to talk about really complicated, really thorny issues that uh, are affecting our national life right now, like health care or immigration. <laughs> But do you think maybe the president had that in mind when he tweeted? I mean, a lot yeah. has been happening in the last couple of days, and some of it, I think, reflects well in the White House, some of it doesn't. But do you think maybe this is something that he did on purpose to draw attention from yeah. those things? I'm, I'm hesitant to assign, uh, you know, motive to what Donald right. Trump does and says, because he's shown in the past that, you know, it seems like he doesn't really mean a lot of what he says. Uh, you know, the, the tweet about the Comey tapes was really weird when he came out later and said, no, I, I, I didn't record Comey at all. I just was saying that to, you know, try to make sure that he, you know, was honest. But it was a weird right. thing to do. And so uh, I think maybe sometimes um, Trump thinks that, that this is a way of him to get back at the media, which is unfortunate because he's the president. He doesn't need to get back at the media. He just needs to get on with the job of being president and let the media do its thing uh, and ignore them. Uh, and he hasn't been able to do that so far. Yeah, and he's revealed, he's drawn them out, uh, and they've exposed who they really are. And I, for one, didn't want to see it. You know, I like a lot of these people. I don't want to know what they really think, but now I know. And so it's hard, it's hard to go to lunch with them now. John, thanks a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.